Since I am of the view that the Board does not possess the legal authority in the Federal Credit Union Act to adopt a two-tier risk-based net worth standard, I will not support the risk-based net worth regulations as currently proposed. Further, it is problematic that I would support a single-tier risk-based net worth standard unless the rule permits the inclusion or at least acknowledges a good faith undertaking to investigate the viability of properly structured secondary capital in the calculation of risk-based net worth ratio to the fullest extent permitted by applicable law. It is also worth noting that in accordance with the requirements of the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1995, NCUA staff estimates that the total non-recurring compliance cost of the proposed risk-based net worth regulations for both complex and non-complex credit unions approximate, approximate $5.1 million and for NCUA totals $3.7 million. I anticipate some, if not many, credit unions may argue that these projections materially understate the actual cost of complying with the proposed risk-based net worth regulations. Regrettably, this additional burden falls on a financial services sector that is not too big to fail and was in no manner responsible for the recent financial crisis. NCUA's de NCUA has dedicated a significant portion of its institutional resources over the past 18 months to revising the proposed risk-based net worth regulations with the ultimate goal of ensuring the safety and soundness of the share insurance fund. While I certainly concur with this objective, I disagree with the approach. If NCUA, NCUA had issued an advance notice of proposed rulemaking regarding the anticipated rewrite of the risk-based net worth regulations, there is little doubt that the overall vetting process and the proposed regulations would have progressed in a much more efficient, effective, and transparent manner. The allocation by NCUA of the cost savings generated from an expedited risk-based net worth rulemaking process to fighting fraudulent activity within the credit union community and assisting the management of credit unions with the development of vigorous and resilient internal control systems and procedures would have further advanced the safety and soundness of the share insurance fund without increasing NCUA's overall budget and placing any additional financial burden on the already overstressed credit union community and its members.